Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Savannah of Soul Libby Dyes Yarn, and this channel is all about my crafting journey. So I do a lot of, of knitting and spinning and yarn dyeing. So that's what's mostly featured here. Here's Aurora. She came to join us today. Little punk. Well, she's probably not going to stay, but yeah. Uh, it is another one of my weekly updates. Um, if you are new, welcome. I appreciate you stopping by. If you are returning, thank you. I appreciate you sticking with me. <laughs> um, it is Monday, February 28th. So last day of February. Tomorrow is March. March is my son's birth month. He's very excited. He won't stop talking about what he wants for his birthday. And that's fine. It's cute. He is allowed to bother the crap out of me. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I just don't know what we're going to do though for his birthday. So that's, that's something that we need to come up with. Um, anyways, uh, everything that I talk about in this video, hopefully everything I talk about will be in the description below as, as well as <clears throat> all my social media links as well, because I have... Instagram, I have a website, I have, <clears throat> oh my goodness, Instagram, a website, Facebook, Ravelry, all the things, you know. Um, there's also a buy me a coffee link in my description. Um, <clears throat> right now, buy me a coffee is really just a, a way to tip me, I guess, you know. Um, to support this channel, my, my business without purchasing yarn or, you know, um, I have plans and ideas for it later in this year. It's just, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure I'm a hundred percent ready to, uh, implement it yet. Uh, so I just have to, I have to think on it still. I've been thinking on it for a while, but I'm still not 100% ready for my idea. So I don't want to talk about it too much. So <clears throat> anyways, I have a lot of knitting here to show you. I have one fully spun up yarn, uh, a skein of yarn and some plans to talk about some whip or not whips. I'm sorry, uh, haul type stuff to talk about. And I think that is it. I'm sorry, I'm watching my cat, making sure she doesn't do anything dumb. She's sniffing the carpet real hard right now. Aurora, can you stop, please? Thank you. Good girl. Thank you. Don't, they always got to scent the tripod. Anyways, um, you might not be able to notice, but um, I did do a little bit of rearranging in this room on Saturday because we were able to get to Ikea because they finally had the cabinets in stock that I wanted. I know I talked about it yesterday. I mentioned this. This um, is a mitt back, M-I-T-T-B-A-C-K, mitt back. It is actually a table leg. Um, it's just one table leg. It's an adjustable height type table leg, so it can go up and down. Um, it's like a sawhorse, if you know what a sawhorse is in woodworking. It's like a sawhorse, except it's adjustable up and down as well. Um, I saw somebody with one of these on Facebook a long time ago, long, long time ago. They were using it as their ball winder and swift stand. So it was a winding station for them. Um... So I was like, I want one of those. And a while back, it feels like a year to me. A while back, we went to Ikea and they, it, their website said they had one in stock and they didn't. Somebody had probably taken it that day. Or else it was the form, fo, floor model one. Um, anyways, this thing had been out of stock for the longest time. The longest time, like, like I said, it felt like a year it probably was maybe, I don't know. But last Saturday when we were driving back, um, from Minnesota, they, uh, I checked the website just in case, cause I knew we were going to be driving past Ikea 
and they happen to have these in stock, like a bunch in stock. So I was like, okay, we're going to stop. I was also going to get the cabinet, but that was no longer. I told that in last week's video. But I got this, um, and when I went to go ahead and put my ball winder and slipped on there, I realized that uh, my ball winder is probably not the best for this. I think those plastic, the small plastic ones, um, probably would work better because it's a smaller, it takes up a smaller space. So I have mine kind of off the, um, the thing, but I have it clamped. So there's a clamp in the middle right here. And then I bought a separate clamp yesterday to hold it down, um, extra secure it. And then my Swift works. It's just kind of close, a little bit closer than what I prefer. Um, so there's still a chance for me to jerry rig this a little bit more to maybe to have this turned the opposite way. Um, I just would need an, another piece of wood on there to stabilize the ball winder. Um, my ball winder and Swift are Knitter's Pride brand. They are the rainbow version. Um, my husband bought those for me a couple years ago for a Christmas present. But yeah, I meant to talk about it last week and I forgot. Um, but yeah, I also saw somebody had hooked up their sock, uh, their CSM. What, what is that? Cranked sock machine. Is that what that stands for? They had bought one of these for their, their sock machine. And so I'm, I'm, once I get my machine, I'm going to put it on here and see how well that works. And then maybe buy a second one of these. I don't know yet. That is still an, I don't know, but yeah, I forgot to talk about that. Anyways, we went to Ikea on Saturday because they finally had this, the cabinets back in stock and more than just like two or three. So we wouldn't be wasting our time. And, um, it is right there. Woo. So that is the Billy bookcase in the navy blue um, colorway. It's the one with the doors, the glass doors. So I have my hand knits in there. Oh, sorry. I have my hand knits in there. I have um, two whip baskets. Well, a whip basket and then a whip bag, like my more fancier ones um, in there as well. I got my shawls in there. Um, and then a few things at the bottom just as storage for now. Um, so that works for me. I do have my silhouette at the top. I don't know if you can see the top. Nope, you sure can't. I have my silhouette up there for now. Um, don't you love my little llama piece? And then my mannequin holding my knits, which those help a lot, or that helps a lot for me, uh, to motivate myself to work on that piece. I haven't touched that piece. That's the long summer cardi in forever. Um, I decided to pull it off the needles yesterday so I could use the cable for a different project. Um, but this will hopefully <clears throat> motivate me to want to work on it again because it's been a while. Sorry. Uh, anyways, that was it. I spent most of the day on Saturday putting that together, figuring out exactly where I wanted it because it has to be mounted to the wall. Um, and then, you know, I had to move the things that were actually right there. Um, I did move my little cube thing over here. My little cube guy is right here now, which is kind of cute because the kids can use it as like a, what do you want to call it? Like they like to play store sometimes so they can use it as like a checkout counter. If they want to, they can get their little cash register, but they're going to love that when I give them that idea. Um, but they like to do that kind of stuff, so I don't mind them using that. Right now, it just holds books and patterns that I've already completed and just a few odds and ends and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I put that there. I moved this guy. This white shelf used to be over here. I moved. It fits there perfectly, so I just went ahead and put it there. I just had to move the yarn up on the wall, which is fine because I don't think I'm going to be dying any more yarn um, that's not ordered on my website. So I just need to get that stock out. Um, what else? So yeah, I was just going through the things I had, kind of purging some things that aren't needed anymore because I kind of just hold on to things. You know, that's the typical craft person. I might need this for a future project. 
no, you, you really don't need to hang on to those things. Um, so yeah, I was purging, cleaning. I haven't finished yet, unfortunately. Um, it just got late in the day, so I stopped. So there's still a few things just laying around that need a home, that, you know, a new place to live. It's just, I haven't figured it. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, what else? What else? I think that's it. I can go ahead and start talking about my whips and then move into plans. So I touched a lot of things this week. A lot of things. Um, I think I think I worked on this a little bit more. So we'll just go ahead. If I talk if I haven't touched this since last video, I apologize. But it is part of my whip go. It was part of February's whip go, so I want to mention it real quick because whip go will come up again. Again, I'm in the middle of a row. I took this to the dealership the other day because I got a oil change and I'm thankful I took it with me. It got a it got a few more rows in there. Barely okay, so barely any. <laughs> that's where I was last week. So I got that. And that's more than three rows, I promise, because it's back and forth and it's half fisherman's rib, which feels like it takes two rows to make one of these like leave yeah. So this is the Stria Cardigan by Andrea Mallory. It's taking forever because it's on a US 2 needles. It's half fisherman's rib, like I said. Um, so it's very dense uh, knitting. It just takes a long time. A long time. This yarn is ampersand fibers. Um, it's 100% Corydale. It's really nice. I can't wait to have this finished. Um, it would have been perfect for today because today at school is cardigan day. But Mr. Rogers all that stuff, but it's okay. Um, yeah. So for whip go, I had this, this, this was called for whip, whip go for February. My goal is about one week on each project that is called. Um, I got a week done. I got seven days out of the whole month on this, maybe an extra day. Um, what else do I want to say? That's, a, that's about it, I guess, because um, I'll talk more about Whip Go later. But yes, I got I got I hit the goal on this one for February. <clears throat> hit the goal. So yeah, that needs more love and attention. Um, next whip. This one I worked on in the car on Saturday only, so one day. But that's okay. Just a little bit more. I'll go ahead and show you. I don't show it all the time. Ooh, or get to do a color change soon. So I took this in the car when we went to Ikea on Saturday. Because Ikea is about 45 minutes away. Well, we usually count it as an hour. An hour drive. So I took it with... Um, this is the uh, Color Therapy Blanket by Warm Stripes. It's a free pattern. It is a all-over seed stitch um, blanket pattern. And you hold five strands of yarn together. So this is a really good scrappy project. I am currently using my advents that I dyed up for last year. And then once all these run out, oh, and I'm holding it together with a a white because I want something to kind of tie it all together. So the entire blanket, there'll be a white strand throughout. But um, once the advent colors run out, I will be switching to the scraps that I have. Um, so it will get even more strange eventually um but I haven't got very far it is this wide ish I mean I can't stretch it out that's as long as my cable is I believe these are my longest cables I might want to double check that but I think these are my longest cables <sighs> but yeah um easy seed stitch just knits and pearls I'm working these on us 11s <clears throat> these are the Knitter Pride um, ones. So you see how they're like these rainbow color? That's exactly what my um, Swift and Ball Winder look like. It's just like this. But yeah, I did. I got a little bit done on it. I'm excited to switch over to a new color. So I, I think maybe this one, which was Skunk. This one might be next. Into this. That's going to be a very long ongoing project for sure because I don't think I'm even halfway through my advent yarns. 
this isn't all of them. They're still in the box up here. I do need to cake them up. I wanted to wait, or I mean, ball them up. I was going to wait because I kind of wanted to put them in order, but I think I've fallen out of order. So I don't think it matters anymore. I just need to ball them up and get them ready. Okay, next. Yep. <clears throat> this guy. I kind of got back into this one a little bit this week, which I'm thankful for because it needed the love. This one is the Sitka Spruce Cowl by um, Jamie Lomax of Pacific Nitco, uh, Pacific Northwest. I think she's PNW Knits on Instagram. Sorry, but it's the Sitka Spruce Cowl. So I'm on this center band finally. Finally. But then I have a whole nother color, uh, color work section to do. But I think I've finally got my color work technique down. I finally learned how to do color work with both hands. So I hold the contrast color in my left hand and my main color in my right hand. So English flicking and continental picking. Finally got it down. It makes my color work smoother. Um, it definitely loosens it enough so I'm not you know, constantly worried about my gauge. Cause so in the beginning of this, I was doing both colors in my right hand and you can kind of see that here where the long float area is. So I did the ladder back to card in these areas and you can still see it's pretty puckered. I'm hoping blocking will help with that. So there's ladder back to cards in there, but you can tell. And then I finally switched to um doing the two two-handed sorry this thing's hard to two-handed and it's so much smoother it's really nice so i got the first color work panel finished i got the two color latvian braid done and started in the seed stitch panel so i got a little bit more of that another latvian braid and then this the opposite way um, there's bobbles in there and I hate, I don't mind knitting these bobbles. They're easy to knit. I just don't like the look of them. I'm hoping that once it's blocked and washed, they won't be so weird, but some like to go in and others will pop out nicely. It's just, the bobbles were an option. I should have just omitted them, but oh well, not a big deal. It's too late now. Um, the Latvian braid, the two color Latvian braid, that was a challenge because when you first are doing it, you are constantly, every stitch you're twisting your yarns and it gets incredibly twisted. But when you go to do the second round to make it the braid, um, it all untwists, but it was, it got really bad by the end after going all the way around. So that was a little frustrating. Yep, just seed stitch and then back into one of those. We'll get there slowly. So it is, it is a full like that, but the cowl will actually be this way, double thick. Yours, this has a provisional cast on, so it'll, I'm going to be Kitchener stitching that to the other end when I get there. I mean, sure, granted, I could just stop it and wear it like this if I wanted to, but no, I, I do in, like the look of the overall thing. It's just tall. That's for sure. Yarns are my own. I hand dyed these specific specifically for this project, so they're one of kinds for now. That one and that one. And I am knitting this in DK. There you can do this in um fingering weight as well. But yeah, I was I got quite a bit done on that one. Oh, I guess I should show you where this stitch marker was, right? Or where I was when I picked this up. So here, sorry. Here's where I was um, when I picked it back up. And so I got all that done. So I can probably move that. Make sure to, I need to remember to move that when I pick this back up. Okay. What is next? This one, oh, okay. I guess this is my last whip that I was able to show you last week. This is, I said it wrong last week, is 
moon mouth. Is that what it's called? Okay, just trying to get everything situated. So this is where I was last Monday, or last Sunday, I guess, but last week. It's right here on that pretty moth. That's silly sheep design. That's where I got that moth um, stitch marker, progress keeper. Um, that's where I was, and I got this much complete. I've actually split for the sleeves. So that has been, oops, see I'm dropping stitches. That has been 110% the strangest thing for me. I mean, yes, this is my first bottom up sweater. This is my first time knitting color work flat. Um, um, so far, everything looks good when I compare it to the chart. I am nervous though, because I am having to decrease or bind off and on the pattern, on the chart, it's confusing. It really is. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping I'm doing my best because only one, only one side is getting the, well, this one did too. Okay. I just couldn't see it. So yeah, that's the bottom of the moth right there. Bottom wings starting, or these are the, the part of the top wings. The little center bit. So this is the the back side. And like I said, I split for the sleeves. You, I just have the the front just left on my needle for now because I didn't want to have to slide it off onto something else. It wasn't necessary. I can still work like this. And then that way, these ones are already on the needle and I can just go back and do that one next. But I'm hoping that this is long enough. Um, the pattern is supposed to be kind of right over the breast area, so I'm hoping it's long enough. Um, uh, yarn is wool stock worsted, um, which is 100% uh, Highland wool. I'm using the Grey Harbor color and Deep Velvet. Love these colors. And yeah, um... <laughs> It's moving along. Uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm just nervous that I'm messing up these uh, bind offs to do the raglan type. The decreases for the sleeve. I'm nervous that I'm doing this incorrectly. Yep. <laughs> so I went to town on that. I've been enjoying that. Um, again, you're the color work. Hashtag year of color work. It is not. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Um, so this one is a whip as well, but I'm not picking it up until tomorrow or sometime in March because this was part of whip go for March. This one was called for March. Um, so you, two numbers are called for whip go. Whip go is just a, like a bingo that um, Jesse Marie does stuff on YouTube here. She created for her cross stitch. I'm converting it for knitting to help me knock some things out. I don't think it's helping me much, but I'm gonna stick with it for a little bit longer, a couple more months maybe. But um, so two numbers are called each month. Uh, the um, Straya was called, plus another one of my whips was called. The other whip did not get touched at all. I don't think I'm just not in the headspace to do it, uh, to work on that. It's brioche. It is advanced brioche. So that is going to wait. That did not get worked on at all. Um, for March, two numbers were called. One was a whip, which is this one right here, and I'll show you in a minute. And the other one is a new start, a pair of socks that I plan. I'm hoping that one of my hand spuns, there's enough of it because I want to make these socks using my hand spun yarn. So I need to look into that more. So yeah, both um, projects are only called for seven days. You know, like only seven days I need to work on each of them. So we'll see. But this one, I'll go ahead and show you because it was already a whip. Um, uh, this one was on the mannequin for the last like month or two, I think. It's been up there for a 
for a little while now. And I have been like eyeballing it and wanting to kind of pick it back up. I put it down because I wasn't sure about it, to be honest. Um, I just wasn't sure. But the more I look at it, I'm like, that could be nice. I mean, I could finish it, see if I really do like it for me. Um, if not, then, you know, I don't know. But it is Sev, I think that's how that is pronounced, by Isabel Kramer. It looks like that. So it's reversible. Right now, this is constituted as the back and this is the front. But again, like I said, it's reversible. You There is the option to put sleeves on it, but I think I'm going to leave it sleeveless. Um, I looked through the pattern and had to re-familiarize myself with where I was. I did leave a little note, but, and somehow it got all wet. I don't know. It's been sitting in a project bag underneath the mannequin the whole time, but it's still wet. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but it got all wet and kind of, but I'm not too worried. That's just the abbreviation thing. I'm not too worried. I can still read it. But um, I went ahead and put the needles back on this yesterday. And we'll see. I'm already past the sleeve split and everything. It's just doing the body and it'll be done. But I'm not that far into the sleeve split. Like barely. Just barely. But this is where I'm at. I need to figure out how to do these um, these cables again. Because they do you do them without a cable needle. I just have to remember how to do that. Refamiliarize myself with that. There's the back. Um, yeah, so really, I got, I guess, the hard part done. Now it's just doing the body. Oh, I think I put this down because I was worried of where this is going to sit. It's like this is higher than where the shoulders drop down. <laughs> So I'm worried it's not going to sit nice, but we'll see. Um, again, I need to get some more done before I can do a real, like, proper try-on. Um, the yarn for this that I'm using is actually Lion Brand's Touch of Alpaca. So this is 90% uh, acrylic, 10% alpaca. It is a worsted weight, and the colorway is called Dusty Blue. So yeah, I had this stuff in my stash and I was going to use it for a different project, decided against it, figured I could use it for this one. But then I was like, I'm, I'm a little worried about it being mostly acrylic. I don't know how well it's going to block. I believe I blocked this part already. Like I put it on some of those, uh, those cords, those plastic cords that everybody talks about. I put it on that and I think I blocked it, but it's really not going to tell me much since there's not much to talk about on it. But I'm hoping we're we're going to see. So it just needs, I need to give it some seven days. Maybe that'll reignite my desire to finish this. <sighs> Kitty's going to the potty if you can hear that. Digging like crazy. Um, so yeah, well, hoping for the best. Hoping I can, I mean, like I said, I did go through everything on here. I'm hoping I understand exactly where I'm at and how to get this oh uh, excuse me back to where it was you know I did get nervous and couldn't remember which needles I was using because I did have to switch back and forth from sevens to eights um, a few times so I'm really hoping, I mean, I did highlight, it says change to US 8, and then that seems to be where I left off. Oh, is that for the hem? See, I need to, I'm really nervous. I'm nervous because I thought that when I took the needles off of this project, it was the US 7s that were still on it. So I'm worried that maybe I forgot to change my needles, but according to the pattern, I would be using eights right now. So it's just what we're going to go with. So that is that. That is Whip Go for March. Again, a pair of socks. The, it was the Curio Socks by Andrea Maori. Um, I spun a whole bunch of these uh, Advent Fiber 
last December and I have one that I really like and I think would be cute for that pair of socks. I just got to figure out if I have enough. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now I have kind of like plans and a new start real quick. Okay, so I think it was Friday, Thursday or Friday, Andrea Mowry sent out a newsletter and it was all about Shifty 2.0. So I've been wanting to make this pattern of this sweater. Um, I actually have all the yarn for it. Um, it's not called for yarn, but a lot of people do it in the uh, Shopple Zabra Ball Crazy. So I had purchased all this last fall for this sweater, but I didn't start it because I was worried. There had been, with the original pattern, there have been a lot of people with gauge issues, um, a lot of extra fabric in the yoke area, specifically in the back. Um, so I was really nervous. Like, I think I did a gauge swatch for this a while back. And according to my gauge, I would have had to do the smallest size available in the pattern. And so I was just like really nervous. So I didn't do it. I didn't start it. And then um, the other day, it was funny. I was thinking, I was like, man, it'd be really nice if she would update her pattern. There's so many people who have had issues. You'd think that she would update the pattern. Well, she did. She made a 2.0. She re-knit the whole thing in a different gauge and um, more sizes. So I'm just like, oh, yay. And tomorrow is the start of the... Oh my gosh, what is it called? There's a hashtag knit along that starts on March 1st. It's her sweater and shawl knit along. I don't know if she has a hashtag in here or not. Um, I, I don't think so. Um, but it's like her, her annual sweater knit along that starts on, on Monday. Uh, not, no, today's Monday. On the 1st of March. So I was like, okay, um, you know what? I freaking gauge swatched this and I can't even remember. I ripped out the gauge swatch. So I think I'll be okay to use the called for needles with my yarn in also in my size. Um, I am going down. What is it? I am going down. I'm doing negative ease in this sweater. Um, so. Fingers crossed, right? I'm using, uh, again, the Schopel Sauber Ball Crazy. Um, so this one, this one right here, this is my main color. She knit hers using um, Spin Cycle. I can't afford that. Plus, I really like um, this yarn. This one is my main color, the main body color. Um, this one is called Jackie Vijos. You gonna be able to see that? Nope. Sorry, guys. So this is my main color. I have three of these balls. I just don't. I have the other two up on the shelf for now. It's super pretty. And then my three contrasting colors. I have this one. Let's see, this one has more blues in it. This one is called Melenstein. And then, okay, so main color, contrast color. This is my other contrast color, which is, oh, I take this one back. This one right here is called Flusbet, Flusbet, sorry, Flusbet. This contrast color right here, which is really pretty. This one is the Jackie V ha uh, Hose. This one. Mm -hmm. And my last color, uh, contrast colors, Stern Schnoop. They're all German. Don't, don't ask me. And this one has a little, uh, oh, sorry. Of course. This last one has pinks in it, um, pinks and greens. So they all kind of coordinate, um, kind of. I think they'll look okay together. If not, it's okay. It doesn't matter. They're very pretty. 
I helped a lady on Friday at the yarn store. She was looking at the show bowl and she was going to make this exact same sweater and she wanted to figure out um, what what would work best because we are a little bit limited with the show bowl at work. Um, so she was looking. Then we had this beautiful like purple burgundy one. I was like, oh, that's gorgeous. That would be nice. But purple isn't her her color for knitting like she loves pink but she doesn't wear it often so so yeah but that was fun to look at what hers might look like um so yeah i gotta get that cast on tomorrow i'm casting on a bunch of stuff right now and that's not necessary with all the whips that i have um this is my next cast on or my new cast on i cast on cosmos by lisa renner yep but I'm doing this as a shop sample for you and me, my my yarn store. Um, so they supplied me with the yarn, and I am going to knit that. Isn't that really pretty? I saw this a while back on Instagram, and I finally bit the bullet and purchased the pattern the other day, and then decided to pick yarn at work on Friday. Um, let me go ahead and show you my colors. I'm not going to take them out of the bag because I have them in here nicely wedged. Those are the colors. I kept it pretty similar to what is here, except I darkened up this blue and darkened up the orange as well. Just because um, I thought they were prettier. So we got the navy blue, um, dark blue, a medium. So navy blue, this will be number two. This is three, which is more of a teal and then the orangey color, and then of course the natural for the color work bits. So it's all Malabrigo, Malabrigo sock. So it is fingering weight, 100% superwash merino wool. It's very soft, almost silky, almost silky. So the first color, the navy blue, is um, Corte de Azur. Is that how it's said? So that's the deepest color. Um, the next color, the medium blue-ish, is Under the Sea. <clears throat> and then the teal blue, it's called Teal Flower, or Feather, sorry, Teal Feather. Then the bottom color, um, I don't know if that's pronounced Marta, Marte, Marta. That's the orangey, um, it's beautiful. So it's got coppers and a little bit of like, I guess, a blue tint to some of it. It's very gorgeous. I did the, I did the test swatch or the gauge swatch in that color. It's very pretty. Um, I almost went with like more of a solid copper color, um, but I thought this one would probably tie in better. It's very pretty. I like, I like it a lot. Um, and then the white is just natural. For the color work bits so that is what i got there and i did my little my gauge swatch so yesterday on the needle usually i'm pretty lazy with my gauge swatch i will knit the swatch like about this size and then i will leave it on my needle and try to count the stitches well yesterday when i did that i got 27 and a half i think this one's 26 <clears throat> 26 stitches The gauge is 26 stitches per four inches or 10 centimeters. Um, while this was still on the needle, I was getting 27 and a half. So I'm like, okay, went ahead and bound it off, which I normally don't do, but I did it and then remeasured it and it was 25 stitches per inch or four inches. Um, I was like, okay, well, we're, we're kind of in the middle there. Um, Then I did block, I washed it last night. I didn't use any soap, but I did get it soaking wet. And then I blocked it last night and I just measured it again this morning. And now it's 24 stitches. I might need to recount it. Because it's funny about or these gauge swatches that you can count them and count them and count them. And I feel like it changes every single, every single time. So I think I'm just going to go with the, well, I did because I already started it. I'm just going with what was called for hope for the best. It's not a big deal. Um, since it did change several times, 
Um, and this is where I'm at. I got the collar finished and I am almost done with the short rows. Uh, it's so dark, but I really like it. It's very pretty. It's so soft to work with, this yarn. So yeah, I'm just getting, getting that going. So this one will be on display at my local yarn store when it's finished. It'll be there for I don't know how long. And then when they're eventually done with it, it'll come home with me. So maybe my next winter I'll have it. I don't know. I don't know how, again, I don't know how long uh, shop samples stay in the shop. This is new, all new to me. All new. So yeah, I know. Not like I need to be starting new things, but that's okay. Um, all right, we're 44 minutes in. I need to eat breakfast. Yes. Um, and this is my haul. This is this is about it. Um, for now. For now. Um, I purchased this pattern at work on Friday as well because I had been seeing this one for a while. Um it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, for over a year now because I when I first bought Woolstock Worsted. Um, for my holiday sweater. Um, this was like the first pattern I saw for that yarn. This is called the uh, Pemberton Pullover. Um, isn't that pretty? It's using Blue Sky Fiber, or it's by Blue Sky Fibers. Uses Woolstock Worsted uh, as part of their classic series. Isn't that beautiful? I really love the fit that she got here. Like, I want that. And I want it in that color. But we only have the small skeins. We don't have any of the big skeins in uh, this colorway right now. Not like I need to be starting this either. So that'll just wait. But I did get the pattern. Um, it's so pretty. It is bottom up though. So that's a little nerve wracking. Here's the green one on her as well. Look at, I just love the oversized look. Like, I want a sweater like that. Ugh, anyways, so, yep, I purchased that. I also purchased this because I was looking through this when I was eating popcorn at work, and I kind of, kind of smudged some popcorn. <laughs> so I was like, well, I guess I'm taking this one home, but I did want it, so. Got that pattern. Um, oh, this isn't, this isn't a haul. What's yarn that I spun? Another haul was I got um, one of these speed darners um, on Amazon because I needed to order this other thing. So I was like, well, I might as well just order it at the same time just in case. Um, I got one of these. I saw Hannah of the Corner of Craft. She uses one of these um, to darn her socks. So I thought maybe I would try it when the need arises. I did find a hole in one of my socks, but it's on the front leg part. So I think my shoe did it. It's just a, a one of the strands snapped. I just have to fix that. I don't think this is necessary for that kind of fix, but yeah, I got that. Um, and, but my main reason for purchasing was because I needed latch hooks because um, my my sock yarn or my sock knitting machine um, should be shipping soon. It is currently being assembled and tested. Did I say that last week? I feel like it's been a week. It's going to be shipping really soon. Um, and I realized that when I ordered it, I was going to wait until it got closer and I was going to order myself latch hooks and the picks and what I needed because I'll be honest, Dean and Bean kind of overcharged for their hooks, um, for their tools a little, a little bit much. A latch hook is like $12.99 through there. So I was like, oh, that's a little too much. So I was like, I can get it on Amazon for cheaper. That's fine. Um, I do think I will need to buy one of their heel hooks from them. Um, cause I don't think that's something that's just commonly made, but that's okay. I can purchase from them when the time comes. Cause I don't know when I want to start doing heels and toes on the machine. I think I just need to learn how to use the machine in the first place. Anyway, so yeah, I had to order latch hooks. I just bought this accessory pack because I'm like, uh, it's not that much. It's, I might as well just get it. Plus I liked these pink and green ones. Um, 
I do have my picks are coming today. They shipped separately. So just regular like picks. Um, but they're pretty. They I think they're purple and orange or pink and purple. I don't know. I can't remember. But yeah, uh, I don't know why they're double bagged. It looks like it came with some like clips of some sort, but different assortment of uh, latch hook styles and sizes. Um, I don't know. All I know is that it's probably needed for the machine, so I got it. Uh, yeah, that's it for haul for now, I think. I don't think anything else came in yet. I'm supposed to get fiber today, um, possibly some yarn, the picks. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it, I think. Okay, hand spun real quick. Um, I finished spinning up this yarn a while back, last week? Last, it had to have been last week. Um, this is, the, fi the fiber is um, from Greenwood Fibers. It is called Pebbles. It is a BFL. Um, I chain plied this and I had a heck of a time trying to pl chain ply this on my um, ladybug. It is not perfect. There are some areas that are looser than others, but, and I think there's some areas that are maybe a little over twisted, over plied. I, I was struggling a lot. I don't know why, but it, it was happening. There was, it was happening, but this is what I got. It's very pretty. Um, I got about 128 yards. It's a worsted weight, nine wraps per inch, and it's 108 grams. Um, I was hoping that I could use this for a colorwork sweater pattern that I have, but I don't know if I have enough yardage. I don't know if I have enough yardage. I don't know, but that sweater's not going to be started anytime soon, so it really doesn't matter. Um, I am spinning another one of my fibers up. It is a Ramboulet by Nest Fibers, and I um, do not like it. It's not anything to do with Nest Fibers. I think I don't like Ramboulet. Um, it is over-twisting, and then when I try to be more gentle with the twist... Um, it's just completely untwisting. Like when I try to do a plyback, it's like there's over twist parts and then there's parts that are completely untwisted. And I'm just like, I do not like it at all. I'm not going to get a fine spin with this. I'm, it's going to be very thick and thin, I think. Um, yeah, um, I'm barely even into it. I have probably, well, maybe halfway through the first, um, bump since I separated it in half, um, I'm about halfway through the first one, maybe. I do not love it at all. And I'm worried because that fiber I showed you guys last week, that red and gray and brown, that one is a Ramboulet. I'm just like, but it's so pretty. It's so pretty, but I struggle to spin Ramboulet. So I need to make sure in the future that I do not buy that fiber because I am not good at spinning it. I am, It's not enjoyable for me, so... So yeah. <laughs> um anyways, that is about it, I think. Yeah. That's about it. So I'm going to let you go. Um oh, I do have court this coming Wednesday finally for that uh case that happened across the street. Um it's finally happening. So this coming Wednesday. Mm, not looking forward to it. But hopefully It'll be easy and it'll just be over and done with and I don't have to worry about it. So, yeah, wish me luck, okay? All right, guys, I'll talk to you next week. Bye!